In the immediate aftermath of my divorce, motivation wasn't a problem. At first, well, I was engaged in a fight for mere survival. I was simply trying to get through each day, to sleep, to eat, to breathe, just to function. And then that soon was replaced with a fight for justice. And oh, did that keep me motivated? Because I felt this intense need, this intense drive to see him face the consequences for what he had done. But then that well ran dry. The court cases were over. Justice was never found. But I still had some motivation because at that point, I had that that little sparkle, that excitement of a new life, a different life. And all of those possibilities all of a sudden seemed open to me. And I hadn't yet considered, well, the reality of it, of how difficult some of those possibilities might be. But then eventually that newness, that, that excitement fizzled out as well. And I was left wondering, well, well now what? I, I've made it through, but I'm not on the other side yet. And what do I have to keep me going now? I no longer have the fight for survival. I've had to let go of the fight for justice. And now the new, well, instead of feeling exciting, it just feels daunting. So what's going to motivate me now? And I know that this is a common experience after divorce. I think so often we approach it like it's it's a sprint. You know, we just get through this thing. We can push through and then it's all going to be good. And then we find out, oh, it's more like a marathon. You, you think you've passed this one finish line and you're still going. So I'm going to share with you some of the strategies that worked for me on those days post-divorce when I found I was lacking motivation. The first is I really found benefit from implementing structure and rules. So I set goals for myself, um, I kind of macro goals that I had posted over my computer. And those were, were motivational, but they also kind of gave me some direction. And that was enough for a while. But then I found that even that kind of started to fade a little bit. I, I needed a little bit more. So I actually brought it down to like a weekly basis, even a daily basis. I literally made a spreadsheet for myself. And on that spreadsheet, I put, these are the things that I want to accomplish. And I put it on a week for me of how many hours I wanted to put towards work, how many hours I wanted to put towards exercise, towards self-improvement, towards you know working on finances, whatever it was. And so I had all together, I think like 15 or 16 different metrics in the week. And I also on each week, I put kind of a little motivational statement at the top. Um, and it really helped me just to give that structure and to kind of track that a little bit more. And I made sure to put things on there that I wanted to do. It wasn't just the have tos. It was things like socialize and, and all of that, because if I could have it there in writing to remind me, oh yeah, I need to do these things. And then I could see that I had done them. It really helped overcome that lack of motivation. Okay. Strategy number two, stage rewards. If everything in your life right now feels like a slog, well, no wonder you don't want to do anything. So take the time to take a walk around the neighborhood on a nice day, even if you have to force the first step. Now, I know part of what happens after divorce is sometimes we feel we feel guilty for, for smiling. We feel guilty for being happy. We feel like we shouldn't be allowed to smile when we've lost so much. And so build those smiles in. Remind yourself that, hey, it's okay to smile. You've just forgotten how. Surround yourself with the right people. And I know that it can feel good to have people around you that are just like, oh, you poor dear, that are just hugging on you and loving on you and that's it. But they're not going to help keep you motivated. On the flip side, you don't want necessarily the boot camp type people around you either because Let's be frank, they're just going to take you off. Instead, you want people that push you, but not too hard, just hard enough to keep you motivated. It can also be helpful if you share with them what your personal goals are and so that they can help hold you accountable. Strategy number four, pair have tos with want tos. 
want to do. So I'm actually going to give you an example on this that was from my pre-divorce days, but it just is an idea for you. So I used to go to the gym really early in the morning before work. And you know, of course, there would be mornings, especially when it was really cold out. I was like, I don't want to do this. So what I did is I splurged on shampoo and conditioner that I normally would not buy. And I only put it in my gym bag. So the only time that I was allowed to use that shampoo and conditioner is if I went to the gym in the morning before work. And there's lots of things that you can do like that. Now, All right. And finally, the fifth strategy. This one is actually the easiest, I think, but it's often the one that we just neglect to do. Celebrate your successes no matter how small they are. I know sometimes we feel like we have to be like capital H healed before we can say, yay, look what I've done. You don't. You can say, hey, I made the bed today. That's awesome. It doesn't matter how small it is. If you did something, awesome. Give yourself a pat on the back. That's one more step forward.